The following program is made possible by First State Bank, offering secure online and mobile banking. First State Bank is ready to serve your financial needs with locations in Warren, Hermitage, and Hampton. First State Bank, the difference is leadership. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Alderman Marshall? Here. Alderman Tolson? Here. Alderman Mosley? Alderman Henderson? Here. Alderman Ferguson? Here. Alderman Burks? Here. Okay. Need a motion to approve minutes. We approve the minutes for September the 14th, uh, 2020 as mailed and received. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any discussion? If none, uh, all those in favor, show of hands. Unanimous. Okay, now we'll have the city clerk's report. Revenues received in the general fund for September 28th is $2,236,761.16. Expenses $2,272,128.83. Revenue and administration $25. Expenses $288,584.84. Revenue law enforcement seventy-three thousand seven hundred thirty-eight dollars and thirty-seven cents. Expenses nine hundred ten thousand nine hundred seventy-eight dollars and forty-seven cents. Revenue in the fire department twenty-one thousand eight hundred seventeen dollars and seventy-six cents. Expenses one hundred eighty-nine thousand ninety-seven dollars and fifty-one cents. Revenue in sanitation five thirty-three five fifty-six eighty. Expenses five hundred thirty-four thousand nine ten twelve. Building code revenue fourteen thousand six hundred thirty-seven dollars and twelve cents. Expenses fifteen thousand three hundred twenty-four dollars and twelve cents. Port revenue fifty-four thousand nine hundred sixty-five dollars and thirty-eight cents. Expenses sixty-eight thousand six hundred fifty-two dollars and forty-two cents. Municipal building expenses $30,246.23. Revenues and recreation $9,792.80. Expenses $116,418.33. Call percent of revenues $6,359.73. Expenses $9,127.42. Only neighborhood center revenues three thousand four hundred seventy-five dollars. Expenses five thousand three hundred thirty-nine dollars and eighty-one cents. Shooting range revenue twenty-one thousand two hundred seventeen dollars and twelve cents. Expenses thirty-nine thousand four hundred fifty-nine thirty-seven. Expenses in senior citizen center one thousand four hundred seventy-nine dollars and fifty-four cents. Revenues and other six thirty-six hundred. Expenses $9,922.32. Airport revenue $5,566.94. Expenses $17,945.26. Economic development revenue $50,000. Expenses $36,813.25. <coughs> revenue and street department is Three hundred eighty-three dollars two hundred sixty. Three hundred eighty-three thousand two hundred sixty dollars and forty-six cents. Expenses two hundred ninety-one thousand one hundred eighteen dollars and seventy-eight cents. Move that we approve the financial statement and the by the city clerk. Second. We have a motion and second to uh, approve the financial statement. Any discussion? If not, then all in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. We should have a September cash balance report. <coughs> City sales tax and revenue received for the month of September $77,806.24. For year to date, total $688,118.45. Expenses $1,000. Expenses $1,000. Expenses $1,000. Expenses 
Agenda is the consent administrative order, and uh, Ms. Tanae Reed, Director of the Water Department, is here to uh, answer any questions, do some explanation, explaining on this. You have the consent in your packet. I'll turn it over to Tanae. Uh, we're required by our NPDS permit to remove sludge at our wastewater plant and our ponds. Um, ADEQ would like to place under us under a consent order to have sludge removed by December 31st of 2021. That comes with a thousand dollar civil penalty. So we've been working on a um, wastewater project for about a year now, which would include removing sludge and some upgrades to our sewer plant because it is past its lifespan and we would also like to um, add sewer to our south bypass to get industrial waste out of the um, south section of the city um, y'all would all remember the problems we've had in the past with the poultry plant when it was running um, and that would also add uh, it would make sewer available to anyone on the south section of the bypass for residential and industrial use. I move that the Mayor City Council approve the consent administrative uh, order. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second to approve the consent administrative order. Any questions? Uh, hey, is that going to include the, the people on the East side of town over there on the bypass that didn't get sewage on last time where they extended our city limits? Um, this would go from the industrial park around to uh, where our interceptor is just south of Lighthouse Church. So that wouldn't include? It would be this section for now. So that wouldn't include the Dawson? Him out there on the east side? Where's that at? I guess that's Pins and Road for lack of a building. No. Okay, on the last go around we did with this uh, sewer thing, it was a big fiasco. Mm -hmm. You know, they left a lot of people's yards tore up, property damaged, and uh, even damaged trees and things, and left them in the way. We're gonna, what we're going to do to ensure that doesn't happen this go around? Um, I'm not familiar with, I don't know what project you're referring to. When they uh, did that sewer project all the way around to George Street was supposed to go all the way down to the south end of town. Okay. And go yeah. Next. yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I mean, that's something we can hold our contracts, contracts for. Okay. Yeah, because this folks still upset about that. Just come and see me. So if we can do that, keep that to a minimum, and damage the crop, mm -hmm. and then to finish the project, I would appreciate it. Right. I mean, we had problems out of that contractor through that entire project. Yeah, I heard about it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? There's not. Let's vote by a raise of show of hands. Unanimous. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Echo? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. We have an ordinance number 928. Ordinance number 928, an ordinance to allow the City of Warren to conduct business with JC's construction and for, up, and for other purposes. Whereas the City of Warren, Arkansas has determined that JC's construction should be allowed to conduct business with the City. 
Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Warren, Arkansas, Section 1, that although employees of the City of Warren have interest in J.C.'s construction, said, it should be said, uh, company, shall be allowed to conduct business with the City of Warren pursuant to all applicable Arkansas laws. Move that we suspend the rules and place ordinance number 928 on this second reading. Ordinance number 928. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> second. All those in favor, show of hands. Unanimous. Okay, an ordinance, uh, ordinance number 928, an ordinance to allow the city of Warren to conduct business with JC's construction and for other purposes. We suspend the rules and place ordinance number 928 on its third and final reading. Second. Any questions? We have a motion and second. All those in favor, show of hands. Unanimous. Ordinance number 928, an ordinance to allow the city of Warren to conduct business with JC's construction and for other purposes. I move that we adopt ordinance number 928. Second. Motion and second. Any questions? If none, all those in favor, show of hands. Unanimous. Um, that ordinance passes. Adopted. Adopted. <laughs> okay. In your packet, you have a uh, copy of the survey plat of the Greaves property. And um, as you know, we're doing the land swap. And I was just got had this in there for your information and then approval. Okay, so I'm going to a little bit more for me uh, while we're, we're swapping. The two the uh, two lots in the in the industrial park. We swapped those two lots for it was a land swap, twenty acres. Mm -hmm. For the and well, I mean that was that, that was what yeah that was what uh, the city council approved to do. Okay, but what are we? What are you asking? I heard what you said at the agenda meeting, and I guess I, maybe I went to sleep. So tell me what we're doing well we're, the, the city will have ownership of 20 acres in the Griggs property mm -hmm. it's about 46 49 acre uh, industrial site and so we swapped the two uh, lots in the industrial park which was 20 acres for this okay okay I think I had it clear and you can see, I mean, it's almost split down the middle just because it's a, a 40, 46, 49 acre <clears throat> uh, total. And so for us to have 20 of it, that's, this was what uh, we have worked out with BC and DC. And this is for informational purposes? Well, I, I would really like for the council to approve it. Okay. Okay. So tell me what you're asking us to approve. Just, the swap and for these two these two specific pieces like we didn't know specifically what we were getting before so right? Right. We just yeah. we were getting this, is, this has been right. surveyed out and divided up and these are the two so this is the actual this is the actual right. Right. survey okay. Okay. okay this is the legal description <laughs> yeah <Thank you>. right. <laughs> okay. it's showing you what two what 20 acres will be in the city's name okay this is the actual uh, plan Plat, etc. Yes, ma'am. Given us. Okay, so I move that um, the city of New uh, approve the survey of land plat as presented. Second. Okay. Um, motion and second to approve this uh, survey plat for the land swap. Any discussion? All those in favor, uh, show of hands. Three, four. Any opposed? one uh, okay I discussed with you all three and one yes ma'am no, no I'm sorry four, four. <laughs> four and one okay. keep me straight and tell me. Uh, thank you uh, okay we talked about the uh, CARES 
money that will be coming from the state to the city and the things that we will be uh, that they are encouraging us to purchase so to mitigate any type of uh, renewed pandemic or disaster and uh, I, would, I think Ms. Uh, Alderman Henderson has shared that the mayor has the authority to spend up to 10. Reluctantly, the council up that to 10,000. It was 5,000 prior to, I believe, 2018. I haven't looked it up to verify that, but it was, it was uh, 2018. I think it was because we were talking about that mower last summer for Kyle. Yeah. Okay. And so, what well, we're, I don't, I don't even, I mean, we may. I may have to go over. I just kind of would like city council approval for this one particular situation that we're in right now. That if I have to go over, um, I mean, they're they're encouraging us to purchase laptops so that if we have to work from home, we will be prepared to do that, which we were not back in March, and uh, we have. Um, ordered extra supplies in case they become scarce again and all these are re um, we will be able to recoup the money I mean I'll do my best to hold it down but if you know when you're talking about getting some uh, my quick suggestion meeting. at the agenda meeting was to have a quick uh, city council uh, call meeting uh, however I mean <clears throat> if we're going to be able to purchase items and get reimbursed i mean that is a, a good thing you had mentioned an emergency clause but there's nothing to even put an emergency clause on and and the rationale of not having a call meeting is well i don't mind it's just that you know we're, we're trying to get the order together and so if we get it together it may be tomorrow the next day to have the meeting but i mean that's up to y'all you know, so, where, where are you with the order? Do you have a, a guest of that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we do. Um, the employee that is working on that is the one that is uh, out right now in quarantine. Um, when she left last week, we had the order pretty much together. It may be right around 15000 Uh, if we, I mean I can split the order so that it you know order some now and uh, the rest of it later so it wouldn't go over the 10 and and mm -hmm. we would get reimbursed uh, yes, for whatever that we the everything we've got on that list for that is reimbursable for okay. this, uh, and we've taken a good inventory and look at for all employees yes ma'am I've talked to all the department heads and, and gotten their input so that we know what we're looking at. Okay. Then I, I will do a motion that we um, allow the administration to spend up to $20,000. $20. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's reimbursable for, <laughs> uh, for uh, equipment for city employees. Good gracious. I will send you an email before I place the order. Will that make you feel <laughs> I was going to ask if you were just saying this. Yeah. Yeah, you will be, I mean, I'll keep you in the loop. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I mean, it's a good thing for our employees to have this and we will get reimbursed for it. Mm -hmm. Who will be able to get the laptop? Sir? Who will be able to get the laptop? Well, the state has generously offered us to be able to go on their contract and get them, and that's what we're pricing right now. And I would like to get another quote or two just to see if we could beat them. A lot of a lot of these other companies though don't have it in stock. And this has to be purchased, invoiced by drop dead deadline of December the fifteenth. And I tell you what that Black Friday sale you could get all kind of good deals. If they're in stock. That's 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 the issue. Um, that's what the school district run into they didn't have no uh -huh. stock. But now the state contract that we're looking at last as of last Thursday, what we were gonna order they had in stock. And you are looking at all departments. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Everybody that has the capability of being able to work from home will have a laptop computer that they can take home to work from. And what else other than laptops? That's really all. Uh, 
with the capabilities that laptops have right now, we don't need to get the, uh, and most of them have cameras included, you know, little Zoom cameras so we can have Zoom meetings. Um, uh, we, we look, I mean, we've kind of talked it through to make sure that uh, this was what we would need. So scanners. We get, I've got one on the list and that would be for someone in my office so that they could generate checks and things like that from home. And now you can use your iPhone as a scanner. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. That's what we do at UAM, so they won't, we don't have any. But numbers. are they city issued? I mean, I wouldn't think that we would want them using no, their never person. They would need to be city issued. Not well, if they're on the same, if they're using the same server, it won't matter. I mean, you know, it's, you can scan it and delete it. It's going, it's all electronic anyway. But again, I don't think we should ask our employees to use their personal uh, equipment. Some people don't even have. Uh, right. I understand. I'm going to say if, if that's possible, if they want it, if they wanted to scan something by the phone, it's easier than doing it to the computer, which is. And some don't even have internet. So I mean, would they have? Would need a hotspot? I mean, it's just uh, you have to look at look at look at the low salaries that we have for our employees. Well, I understand. I've got students the same way. You know, I mean, it's just uh, South Arkansas. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, we've got one employee that maybe lives. Uh, in an area where internet is not really good, but it, that's not like an essential that um, another person in her office uh, well, When does. you start talking about working at home, you're talking about working remotely so that you can yes, carry on the day-to-day, -day, you know, operation, you know, of the city. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what we're trying to get compared, prepared to do. And it's 100% uh, Reimbursable is what I'm hearing. You said. That is that is what they're they have given us list of things that are reimbursable and the things and and they have also given us guidance on what to order to uh, work remotely. The municipal league and the city has looked at all departments. Yes, ma'am. Sanitation, police, fire, this staff, my office staff, as well as district court. Well, yes, but if they use their personal stuff, that'll open them up to free of information. Yeah, and that's what I mean. I, I would <laughs> highly recommend that us, that they do not use their personal. Uh, and you are one hundred percent correct. It does open you up to the uh, FOI. Well, and I mean, we use our personal phones for our call meetings. You know, when we're co when we're calling each other, it's our personal phone. <laughs> but that's not documents yeah. coming through, et cetera. But, I mean, it's still information. I mean, it's, I'm just saying, if they have to, a scanner is not that much money. Well, I mean, like I said, I, I've got one on the list. Mm -hmm. I'll go back and ask the department heads if they want one. But I would I mean, think that the department heads would probably... Uh, need one. Do we have, I mean, do they, uh, the, the department heads, do they have city cell phones or are they using their their personal phones? Uh, all department, department heads have department city heads. Department heads do. Mm -hmm. city cell phones. Okay. And that would answer your question. You can try. Top of the vote. Okay. Yes, of course. How many, how many people are essential that would be needed? That would need How many employees that will be essential to need this? I think we've got about twelve. That, I mean, twelve computers are what we what we're planning on purchasing, so that each department, like uh, in sanitation, mm -hmm. department head already has a laptop. So we need another one for his admin. How old are, is his laptop? It, it's it's fairly up within a year or two. And then in, in my office, I'm the only one that actually has a laptop. Everybody else's desk. Okay, so Charlotte doesn't have a laptop? No. She should have one. But she will after we do this. And what else is on the list that they can, uh, that's eligible for this program? I don't have all of that um, in front of me. Why don't you come um, back with that, ma'am? And because i like to know the essential employees that's going to add it to the department. I will draw my motion. 
Okay. So what are you, what are you asking, Alderman Burks? You, you want a list of the, de of the departments and the ones that are getting laptops? The essential ones, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's easy because we, we decided all that in staff meeting. If my memory was better than what it is, I would be able to rattle it off for you right now. But, uh, uh, well, I mean, and the thing about it is, these laptops, I mean, they will be kept in a secure place so that the if and when someone should go home. Why would then, they be kept in a secure place? Well, we don't need them for everyday daily use mm -hmm. right now. They're not working at home yet. Uh -huh. They don't have to be working at home, but they can still have the laptop. Well, if they wanted at their desk with their other uh, computer, that would be fine. But I mean, I, I, mean, I don't. I would think you would have a, if them on, listed on an inventory list. Uh, I don't know how it's set up, but that person would be accountable, you know, for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you mean they would have to go home and then come back to get it? I mean, even if someone have to be quarantined if they had the laptop they could work remotely from home well if they were feeling uh, you know up to doing it and especially if they have to be quarantined for 14 days right but that's what she's saying if she gets the order together and if she gets it by friday we're going to have to i mean everything will go on the the list every i mean even computers we've got all of those on our asset list what i'm hearing is that the council would feel more comfortable seeing the actual not me. I think. I mean, because she could go. She could. Buy, she could make two orders under ten thousand, and we wouldn't even have to. She wouldn't have to get our permission. Is that wrong or right? That's true. Well, but I don't think she would want to do that. No, but I mean, she could just say, and we. I mean, the original anyway. plan for the extension was, was, was for uh, if we was doing a project. So not, the, not, the, not the order and equipment or whatever, but it was for a particular type of project, just as he stated. So I, I wouldn't think that she would want to do that. No, but this is the CARES Act, though, right? Yeah. It's money reimbursable. And it ends up, uh, it ends. Uh, it's not like she's taking our money. Right. So instead of that, the money that's coming from where? The government. The federal government to cities and uh, counties. Each city and county. Yeah, I understand, county. but who's putting this for? I mean, who? DFNA is the. Uh, it's, it's, it's going to be done, right? Yes, sir. We, we have to submit online our projects to DFNA. So, what I'm saying is the Republican and Democrats will agree on that. This isn't a the new city. thing. Yeah, no, okay, no, okay. No, I had something to try. Right. The, <laughs> the state has already got, well, they have gotten a commitment for the money. Okay, well, I so just said there's one thing about the federal government. Wait. Yeah, this ain't what's going on now. This is in the past. Oh, I thought it was well, just have a conference call and get the information. And, and <laughs> if that's what y'all want, what yeah, they're that's doing fine. In Washington. I think that crazy. it sounds like uh, council will be more comfortable than that. Okay. We will do a. a conference call and I'll have a list of, uh, of the departments and who's getting the which departments are getting what okay that's interesting and he okay. mentioned essential uh, staff as well if they are not included okay all right now then we have a uh, another resolution <clears throat> and this one is the one that's pertaining to the uh okay you're going to read this one uh, the other one was important so you're going to read the uh, resolution yes ma'am resolution number a653 a resolution by the city of warren supporting the house joint resolution 1018 of 2019 h JR 1018 of 2019 proposing an amendment to the Arkansas Constitution to continue a to to continue a le, le, levy of a one half percent sales and use tax for state highways and bridges, county roads, bridges and other surface transportation, the city streets, bridges and other surface transportation after the retirement of the bonds authorized in Arkansas Constitution Amendment 91 
as special revenue to be distributed under the Arkansas Highway Revenue Distribution Law, whereas Arkansas Constitution Amendment 91 levies a one half percent sales and use tax to provide additional funding for the state's four lane highway system, county roads, and city streets, and whereas the one half percent sales and use tax under Arkansas Constitution Amendment 91 is due to expire on June the 30th, 2023, unless a new constitutional amendment is passed and whereas HUR, HJR 1018 proposes that the sale and use tax levied under Arkansas Constitution Amendment 91 be continued to provide special revenue for use of maintaining, repairing, and improving the state system of highways, county roads, and city streets and whereas without continuation of this sales and use tax, the state will ensure future investments in the state highway system, county roads and city streets, and whereas the continuation of the half cent, half, the one half percent sales and use tax will ensure future investment to the state highway system, county roads, city streets, and whereas this investment will create jobs, aid in economic development, improve quality of life, and provide additional transportation infrastructure, including specifically a four-lane highway construction plan designed to connect all regions of the state, and whereas it is beneficial for all municipalities to support HJR 1018, as a necessary funding mechanism for our travel infrastructure and will serve as an economic boom for the state. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of Warren, Arkansas, Section 1, that we do hereby support the legal proposal fund found in HJR 10, 18 of 2019, as well as its adoption by the people of the state of Arkansas at the next general election. I move that we adopt resolution number A653. Yes. Second. There's a motion and second to adopt resolution number A653. Any discussion? Uh, do we have anything in the STIP program in our area? Correct. I don't believe we do currently. The last thing I remember was something on the, the port over in the Arkansas City. What about SIUs? The what? SIUs. SIUs. Give me, tell Segments me. Segments of independent utility. Not to my knowledge. Um, I mean, we can't even get them to help us with the traffic control out here on the highway, on their highways, for the congestion of the school. And then they're going to require us to do the studies and everything. They're not surprised with any more. And then over on, in my world, you got ditches three foot deep. You're running off in them, and then we got one of the nicest housing developments over there in my world, and it's just a little old goat trail down to it. And then we supposed to, you know, say 530 is a dead thing now. The money has been there way back when Jay Dicker was improved in it. And if you go to, oh, if you go west of here, 167 now is the line all the way down to the state line all the way up to New York. Then you go back east of us, then there's another double line thing up into it. We get no benefit out of it. Oh, right. Well, we stand to lose about $200,000. What are we doing with it? I can't see it in my world. Well, the paving, our paving. Well, with my, where four of my world go, I'm against it. Okay. Any other comments? I call for a vote. Uh, yeah, all those in favor, show of hands. That is four, four, and any against, one against. Okay. As, as it, it relates paving, uh, just because we put 120,000 or 100 and whatever that we put in the budget for paving, that could be whatever this council say. There have been times that we have increased it. I mean, when you look at the list, 
if you want to add more money, then you put more money into those particular areas when the budget is done. But you say you don't have any money. We do have money. Well, this well, it's is always, uh, it's always running about two or three streets, and there's a whole bunch of them that's not. That's, add, more that's money to, add more money to that particular line item. Well, it's always the deal. What this country is talking about is very true. There are some streets that's been neglected for the last 25 years. <clears throat> okay, let's move on to uh, public comments. All of them recognize. Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor. I received a call today from uh, Mr. Everett Wallace who informed me that his dad Mr. J.T. Wallace, who was 101 years old, passed away last Friday, and he was asking if the city council would uh, be kind enough to do a resolution honoring uh, Mr. Wallace's uh, life as a citizen. The funeral, it will be this coming uh, Saturday. Uh, some of the things that he emailed uh, to me uh, stated that he was a World War II uh, veteran. He was a business uh, owner as well as uh, worked at some of the other uh, plants within uh, uh, Central Southeast Arkansas. But he was one of our 101 year old uh, citizens, uh, a veteran. And having said that, I move that the City Council uh, do a resolution honoring Mr. J.T. Wallace, one of our citizens who was 101 years old, and have it prior to the funeral on Saturday. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to have a re resolution for Mr. Uh, Everett Wallace's father. Mr. J. J. T. Wallace. J. T. Okay. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor of show of hands. That's unanimous. And I will email uh, the information for the resolution before I leave this meeting. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> what about Mr. Raymond Cole and, and Mr. Tommy Burr? Um, <laughs> We, we, got, we did one for Mr. Burke. Let me tell you, someone <laughs> asked me that question about Mr. Uh, Burke, and I just had a blank, you know. Uh, but then when Charlotte sent me the one about Mr. W.T. Outlaw, I remember it, but when someone asked, why did you all not do one, I'm thinking, oh, did we not, you know? <laughs> and that's when I asked the question uh, at the uh, agenda meeting. But uh, we did uh, mention at the agenda meeting referencing uh, Mr. Raymond uh, Colin and Mary, you want to speak because you were going to touch base. We, they have, we touched base with the family and they have uh, asked for the December meeting for it to be written. So if y'all want to make the motion tonight, if we need a motion to do a resolution yeah. for Mr. Uh, Colin. So, so. Okay. I'll second. Motion and second to have a resolution for Mr. Colum in the December meeting. All those in favor of show of hands. Unanimous. Okay. I don't recognize uh, two citizens. Uh, one of them was refusing to come to the meeting because uh, <laughs> it just kind of uh, flew at me. Because uh, he was a white guy. He said he didn't want to be treated like white trash. When I told him that everybody has a word to say in this building because uh, they're citizens of the town. And on the other one, it was uh, a businessman that came to me and said he was uh, extremely disrupt with the BCEDC because it seemed like all they do is uh, so seek out out of town people to give benefit to do business in the town. And he felt like since he was a businessman here, and had been contributing to the city, the school, and a lot of other projects here that he felt kind of slighted because uh, his family was uh, in mind of doing some of the same things to produce housing and things in the city, but they was overlooked. Okay. We'll move on to the next item.
Chief Hilder. So no no uh, comment on on when co freeze comments. I mean I hope that we're not making people feel Well they do. Well that's when they everybody's been given land. And like he brought up to it, we charged Mr. Bird for his land out there in the industrial park. But if uh, he was already in the business of doing houses and doing things like that, and, and also uh, they sell houses and do everything else, and they thought they should have been one of the ones that was addressed, and especially since he was asked to participate with the BCDC, which you say he'll never do again. And they didn't want to give their names? I'll ask him again. Let him come. I mean, that's yeah. all. That's all we're gonna get anything solved and hit it head on. Well, I just want to let him say, Joe Cat. Okay. And if he get mad at me, just say, but he was. He <laughs> but was yeah, I mean, we can't. I understand. You know, I know. Know. But when people come to me in confidence, you know, think about this because they think it's certain clicks mm -hmm. or your last name don't match some, and you're never gonna get recognized. You know, the funny thing and through conversations. <laughs> How folks just go back and reflect on Greg Reed's name was even brought up. He said, if you brought something up to Greg, at least he'd come out and listen to you and see that you have something that uh, could be perceived as good enough to go ahead on and pursue. And, uh, you know, if we was to do a windshield or two around the town and just go into the Exxon or the McDonald's or somewhere and just ask the person how they feel about us, we're going to go all right. Well, we would, at least I personally would welcome him or anyone else to come, and I don't uh, think that we would treat that individual as anything other than the way that we would want to be treated. I tried to convince him, but... <laughs> I mean, in my phone, and my door is open 24, well, not 24-7, but sometimes I feel like it. Is it how can he come to you when you're on the board, the next official member? Well, I was in the meeting, and I, I, I think I know what you're talking about, and I've, I've talked to Joey. And, you know, at, at that meeting, there was they were not giving anything away to a, a de housing developer. But we're separate from BCDC, so we shouldn't... Well, uh, and there you go again. The appearances. If she sits on the board with them as ex official member, we'll automatically draw in, just like the racial statements that was supposed to be brought to me about that was made about the city council that was in there. It's not what actually happened. It's what people in their mind deemed that happened and we won't be able to change it. Just like Thomas Miller, it's, it's just a thing about, we got a civil service commission to keep the politics out of time. But the reason why that they think that he's being kept off is strictly because of family ties and political ties. Well, anything that, any decision that any commission make can be appealed to the city council. And as I state at most meetings, the council is the governing body, uh, you know, of the, of the city. Um, and we probably shouldn't be talking personnel uh, issues, but uh, if, if there is uh, something that any citizen would like to uh, share or feel that they have not been treated fairly, there is a complaint form that's in the uh, mayor's office. I, I hope it's still there that uh, a, a, the person can actually uh, complete. But I would think that if we are advertising for a position and someone applied, they should be given the same opportunity uh, equally as everyone else. Let me ask you, what, what ratio was about for the city council? Well, I asked the mayor to investigate about it, I it back about it. She said she wasn't at that meeting when I brought it up in the agenda meeting. It was in reference to the BC EDC comment that came to us some time back. Oh, about time to say that we were sent about <laughs> <laughs> I was not in, I've never been in a BCDC meeting where anything racial was expressed. Maybe that was before I 
Was no, that was when you was here when I asked you about it. You said you didn't attend that meeting. No, the meeting I didn't attend was the one where uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'll have to go back and look at the tapes, but I don't, I don't recall any any meeting where racial comments were made at a BCDC board meeting. If, I mean, if yeah, it, 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 it did come to, it was derogatory comments made about the makeup of the council, yet yeah, it did come to all of us because it came up. But it wasn't racial. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what I heard it wasn't. So, oh, you heard it. <laughs> I mean, I heard some derogatory comments. No, 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 it's not. I mean, I heard some derogatory comments, but it didn't have anything to do with race. Okay. Well, it's taking on leave more and more, I, I, I asked about it. I mean, I'm not trying to hide anything what I knew. I'm just saying it was not like race was not involved in it at all. Well, it's been more than several months, so it's been something that's just derogatory, like we don't know how to run a meeting and so and so and so and so, but I ain't going to go into all that. I, I asked to bring it up because, you know, just like a whole lot of things, when you're not really involved in something like harassment or some sort of that kind of thing, but if you don't, if you're complicit with it, you just as, as guilty as the person that did and I don't recall you asking me to investigate. If you had, I would have. Right here, right here, that's me why I could cut. Just like I asked about the uh, the uh, sprinkle park over there on the west side, and you said that you was going to have the uh, city attorney to look into it to see could a non profit pick that up and operate. I still hadn't heard about that. That, no, okay. Well, You know, it's one thing about it is when I say something, I can say it twice. I've got no reason to fear and nobody going to bully me. And just like I saw a representative sitting threatful, bullying text to me, just because I don't go along with what y'all say, it don't matter to me either, but I'm not going to be bullied. That's the reason why I don't do texts. Folks ain't got enough guts to face you, face up. They want to send you something, they want to text. Okay, well, let's move on to our committee report. Chief Gilbert. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, just once again, we're here. You guys have a copy of my month's report in front of you. Um, not much has changed. We, uh, we're still stepping along and uh, trying to get positions filled as an our patrol division and, and attempting to get uh, some more needed updates training and equipment, but... How many positions do you have open? Zach was going to ask, so I thought I would ask. <laughs> <laughs> One. This is always a complicated answer, so I'm going to say it like this. It depends on how you look at it. Do I say it's one possibly two. Okay. <laughs> but we are, I can tell you what we did do. Um, we had put a deadline in to when we were going to uh, stop accepting applications and go ahead and get a civil service board meeting on the call that we did get a civil service board. I got put so close to the deadline that we did call for a civil service board meeting. Right well, at the deadline, we got an influx of on applications. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean you, you received several applications? Were, 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 were they certified individuals? We had maybe one that was certified after the rest were just you know, kind of like they shouldn't get law enforcement, getting into law enforcement. Uh, we kind of branched out our advertisement just a little bit, and we're in the process now just vetting to see um, I know right now we're in the process of doing background checks on about six or seven individuals to see if they'll... To uh, include the certified person? To, to include the certified person, yes, now. Okay. But, you know, you know, either here or there, a lot of times when you start doing background checks, a lot of people who get eliminated based on the background checks as far as the position and things that may have happened in the past. So that's why we kind of get it pretty good. So, uh, like I said, right now we're probably looking at probably seven or eight applicants that by the time we have civil service for we could still be seven or eight people went down to one or two. It just depends on the um the uh, with the background. Um, but you did have one certified person that applied. It's gonna be at least one certified yes. At least one. Yes ma'am. Yes, ma For sure one. Yes, okay. I like that all equipment is functional. Well all of it is functional. <laughs> I mean, I but I would like to say all of it's functional that that we use. <laughs> 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 Things we're part now, but for the most part, things that we use on a regular basis are functional right now. And the vehicle repair tracker report is not bad. Yeah, that's good. Right. Uh, and then I, we want to a couple of times where you didn't have anything. So. Right, 
Right. So I, I wondered if that was a mistake, but I decided not to ask. <laughs> no, ma'am, I give credit with credit with you. I think you were aware a few months ago we initiated and put on, uh, matter of fact, you said tonight, Officer Gorman, or the, uh, uh, you know, the maintenance of the vehicles to make sure that people with PMCS and their vehicles on a regular basis getting their oil changed, being, being motorized on a timely basis. And, and since that has um, um, taken place, we're getting a little bit more traction with our repair and things of that nature. So we're trying to keep a better eye on and keep our car the better. Okay. Not wait to have major issues before you tighten the boats. And I think the last meeting we were at full staff based on the hiring. Then I think today we are already get one off the design. Uh, we have the last meeting council meeting, but like I said, we'll keep on taking a long time. We do have a several uh, good applicants that we have to review. Okay. Any other questions? Any other comments? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Well, yes, ma'am, that would help me. Those are always great to get. Yes, ma'am. Cool. What, what are you getting at your exit interview? Well, this particular exit interview was the same as that before. I pulled no punches. The other, you know, it was always about, a lot of times it was about money, and they just pulled on bigger, better things. Or, or just, like I said, law enforcement is not the glamorous field it was back when I started 30 years ago. You know, it's just like, you know, it's not a give and take in. It's, that it's, not, it's not as appealing as it used to be. Um, yeah. <clears throat> The last individual I, I we were unable to do an exit interview only was a disgruntled employee, so um, the grievance for leaving was just more or less personal than it was anything that had anything to do with the police department. Yeah, I know this has been a long <clears throat> run out, run deal without having this problem. And I've always said that we need to do whatever we can to keep good officers and pay them. Well, I and, yeah. I, was there a time when you talked about cutting officers? We have never talked about cutting officers. We have never talked about cutting. Um, what I have done, I don't have credit for the mayor. I've been given a, a comparison sheet. We called uh, maybe about uh, it was all the government, nine or ten departments that are right here in our area that I think if you want if you, once you can see it and see what Warren is paying compared to what the departments around us are paying, you, I mean, they, 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 it sticks out like a sore thumb. Right. Um, so, uh, I mean, when you have departments, and I understand that smaller departments can pay more because they have fewer employees, but when they're right down the street from you and they get open it. Can we get a copy of this comparison sheet that you just mentioned? Yes, ma'am. I have one right here. I, have a copy of I would love to have a copy, and I, I'll make a copy for the other time. Well, actually, I've ordered my field. I thought the machine was up this operation. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Right now. <laughs> and then. That information will be presented the next place in the next week. Oh, thank you. So, that, so, okay. you know, I've got, so that you'll know. Michael's what I was wanting at four. Oh. Thank you so much. He's already, he's made a proposal too, and, and you'll have that. Thank you. Thank you. And not just, not just the police department, but other departments as well. Well, actually, we requested that at the uh, agenda meeting that. We, if we could get a copy of the step increase or whatever it is for the employees from the uh, city employees handbook, we did we did find that. Okay, <laughs> we'd like to have a copy of it. Okay, I would like to have a copy of it prior to the meeting. Okay, this speaks volume. Thank you. Well, uh, Ms. Marjorie, this has been. Uh -huh. Something yeah. I've been talking about for a long time, a long time mm -hmm. and I'll continue to talk about it as long as I'm around because we definitely need to take care of these individuals out there 24 7. And to me, that is a part they are part proud, and we should, uh, we should maintain that. Any other questions of the chief? If not, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll move to the fire chief Mike Ashcraft report. Good evening. Good evening. This month we had uh, 26 calls. Uh, we had one structured fire. I would point out that it was at the uh, 
AHF plant on the bypass, and we got to use the new ladder truck for the first time. It was definitely put in business and good use. We also had one grass fire, one vehicle, two educations. Educations keep continuing. We had one dead, one was there to be saved. Uh, 21 other calls. They bring us 292 for the year. We're 74 more than this time last year. As you saw in the uh, paper, we received a donation from Potlatch, and I appreciated the alderman that uh, came by and took a picture with us, uh, receiving that check from Potlatch, uh, and their willingness to help us this city and the department. Uh, presently, as you uh, saw in the report, we're installing a washer and dryer system in the department. That's going to be used to clean our turnout gear. Do you already have one? No, ma'am. Never have had one. To uh, be installed and prevent cancer within the department, as per an act that was passed by the legislature some years ago. And we will now be in compliance as a requirement to that act. Uh, we have been uh, utilizing monocellos and elevators and going back and forth as we deem necessary and, and we are, we are able to do. Uh, the, the fire department contract, uh, conducted training exercises on Davenport the other night. I don't know if y'all have been down Davenport, but uh, the, uh, the people over there that complained about that initiative, they said they really appreciate that. Yeah, they came out in droves down the street and thanked us for doing our training down there. So we, uh, we, we, uh, we have a couple more structures there, I think, uh, that they're going to recommend city council look at in the future. One of them's boarded up right next door to the place we trained at. So I will uh, let them take it from there. Uh, but they are ready for final cleanup with uh, Mr. May and his department. Uh, we answered 12 storm calls during uh, last uh, Saturday's Hurricane Delta. Uh, coming through, mainly trees in the road, power lines down, uh, helping the street department out cleaning those roads and making sure the uh, city was uh, okay with that. Um, and I don't, uh, Sean kind of stole a little thunder in here, but I'll take it too. I've submitted my pay increases also to the, uh, uh, the city and the ways and means. Uh, the mayor has a copy of those and she will be. Did you not bring a copy with you tonight? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my copy don't work again, no, Sean. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, You're right next door. <laughs> He and I work well together, though. Uh, the, uh, uh, I have comparables from cities that are just like fire departments like ours, not the EMT departments that have money coming in, but cities that are just like ours. Okay, so I have comparables with mine also, and y'all will be getting those, and we would be happy, both he and I, to explain anything to the Ways and Means Committee at their next meeting. We would like to have it prior to the meeting. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, those are ready to go to you, I believe. The mayor has those ready to go the, out. The file toes aren't, but, uh, but your requests are. And that's all I have. <coughs> I don't know if uh, Alderman Topher, you got an announcement. Well, I want to make a motion that we accept the uh, Sean Henderson hired as volunteer of fire. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second to accept the volunteer fire of Sean Henderson. Any discussion? All those in favor of show of hands. It's unanimous. We are very happy to have Sean. Good man. Where's he from? He's from here. Really? Yeah. Good deal. Yes. Deborah Oh, is that Deborah Sullivan? Oh, okay. Yeah, I know where he is. Good yeah. fine, man. And we are uh, just one away from being full staff. So, it's our volunteer side. Mm -hmm. Okay. If no other questions. Thank you, uh, Chief Ashcraft. All right. We'll move into sanitation uh, report. Mr. Mike. Good evening. Good evening. So we've got the sanitation report. Our uh, <coughs> sanitation, sanitation department is functioning as it should. Uh, we had some issues early last week with both of our dumpster trucks being down at the same time. Fortunately, we were able to get one of them back in operation within a day and uh, the second followed the next day, so we're able to get everything that's uh, 
powder uh, taken care of. Um, Mike, go ahead. Are you a youth? Okay, mine might be long. Um, I noticed that the lot right next door to Everett Wallace House, the stone house that memory always um, remind us uh, where it is, that there's like a little plot there that was not uh, cleaned up. And I've got something uh, like you look at you. Okay. And then on down the street where I talked to you about Miss Clark's and I think we yes, wrote it to uh That's condemned. Okay. And we're condemned. waiting on prices. Okay. Uh, this is Mr. Wallace's house here. Uh -huh. And this is the lot that the the mm -hmm. there's a telephone pole right here. Mm -hmm. This blue line indicates ownership of that lot. Mr. Wallace actually owns that strip of land there. He may not know that. He may not know that, but I will let him know. <laughs> but that is, that is his property right there. I, I, will let him know. I, don't, I don't need this. Oh, I, don't I was know. curious Mr. about Mr. that myself. I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. Tell okay. me how it is. Yeah. Well, I was curious about it because of the, the clean and evenness yeah, of the way I mean, that they mowed up to that hole and down. Yeah. And I thought I was curious why they left it and I'm going to go back and check. Um, and his mom may have, his parents may have purchased that and he was <laughs> not aware yeah. of he's paying taxes on it. <laughs> okay. And we had asked uh, at the agenda meeting, if you'll recall sometime back, you know, we used to get like listings of the properties that people had turned in complaints on and then you would let us know when it was time for the council to take action on. Uh, the mayor was kind enough on August the 6th to send us a listing and the latest one uh, is dealing with the 510 uh, Hankins Street, mm -hmm. uh, the lot on Macaulay, uh, 146 Bradley Court, uh, 604 Cook, 33 Lakeside Drive, 209 Pine Street, 621 Macaulay, 620 Macaulay, Rock Street, and that says Eddington Family, yes, ma number 20 Davenport, number 26 Davenport, and that's what the fire department just mentioned uh, what they had done. Uh, 1014 South Main, 422 Halligan, and 420 Halligan, and 701 York. Are any of those at the point that uh, council need to take action on? Because we don't do the day to day, and unless it is brought to our attention, oftentimes we will not know that we need to do something in order for it to move forward. Just as Ms. Clark and those others have set their whole summer, you know, beautiful yards and had to contend with, you know, the lots not cleaned up. Well, um, you may have in your packet a list like this. Actually, it was not uh, in our packet. Really? It, 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 today. today. We were given yeah. this uh, when we day. came in today. Yes. Off which if we had gotten it and we could have gone through and and looked at it, but just getting it when we come to the council meeting and we're we don't have time to like I understand. Yes. I was asked to get this together Thursday evening. And we appreciate it. And today and that's hence it's got handwritten notes on it to get it prepared for you. And these are lots since January of the letters that we sent out. <clears throat> Can you tell me where we are? I mean, are we, are any of these, and I haven't studied it because I just thought it when I got here. Uh, can you tell me, are there any that council need to take action on tonight? Yes, ma'am, there are. Uh, okay. 422 Halvin Street. What page are you on? Uh, it's the first page. Oh, okay. It, it says sent letter. Uh, I believe, so has not, there's been an attempt made on the yard, but nothing. That's quite bad for the you did say 422? 422 Okay. Street. All right. And then uh, 1014 South Martin. What page are you? 
Okay, going down further. Okay. Second page, uh, 513 West Pine. Okay. Those three are ready for city council to condemn if so deemed. I move that we condemn property at 422 Colligan, 1014 South Martin, and 513 West Pine. Second. Motion and second to uh, condemn the three properties. You need dis more discussion? It was mentioned at the uh, agenda meeting that when we condemn, we take ownership, but these are properties that taxpayers are paying. They have uh, they're keeping their yards up, their homes up, and I do not think that they should suffer and that the council, city of Warren, should move forward in ensuring that we get property cleaned up. If we're wanting industry to come in, people come and they tour the area. They go into all neighborhoods and look and we certainly would like to have industry to come into our area, but when you go around town and you look, um, it's very disheartening. Put your property up for sale. Your property has decreased because of the areas that you're in. Call for the vote. No other discussion. All those in favor, show of hands. It's unanimous. Okay. So can we, Mr. May, uh, on a weekly, a monthly basis, have updates like this? And then you, uh, thank you so much. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I'll keep this handy. Sure. Mike, what about the update on the Oklahoma Club history? The, uh, <clears throat> the gentleman was given in here today to make uh, changes to either bring up the code or uh, remove the trailer. Neither one of those has been done. I made a phone call and left a message on the entry machine last Thursday at 4, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I still have not received a call back from him. I expect him to be here tonight. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to cut the water off the trailer and start the process of verifying temperature still in there, right? Where we know. Yes, they are still there? As far as I know. As far as I know. I mean, the information I'm getting is second hand you know, from a neighbor that uh, basically told me that they caught up on the rent and so he's not going to do anything. That's second hand information. I don't know how accurate it is, but it's my understanding that they're still in route right now. Did you bring your comparative uh, pay scale sheet with you? <laughs> do you have one? I do not. Do you plan to do one? Yes, <laughs> Okay. Can we get it before the 20th? The 20th of, yes, ma'am. Of October, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Mike, on uh, 1404 uh, Mill Road, Ms. has been grilling me out for the last month or more about all that refuse pack piled up on the side of the road and like you just said, taking life and growing, growing the mattresses, all of them. That is on our jump list and I don't know why it hasn't been picked up, but it will be tomorrow. Thank you, I'll tell you. Who picks up the um, shrubbery from the storm? Does one have to call in to get that picked up? You're talking about tree debris? Yes, uh-huh. Uh, the city will mulch up the debris that's six inches in diameter or smaller. Uh, some of the larger debris that people have gotten by the road, they're, I mean, the homeowners are responsible. So they're responsible for getting that hauled off? Yes, ma'am. We don't have an avenue to do that. Um, 
Then we have a piece of equipment at one time that you could like grind it there on the spot. We do, and that's what I'll say, but it has to be six inches in diameter or smaller in order to go through the chip. So what do they need to do to get that service, I guess is the, what I'm asking. Just call our office. Okay. And we've got a three-page waiting list right now. <laughs> About 75 names. <clears throat> I was trying to figure out if the uh, the lot it's on Epic Street up from where the McCoys where they cut it down. Okay, there's a gray house on the corner. It's the corner of Phillips and Etheridge, the Matthews uh, home. Is that on this list here? <clears throat> no, ma'am. It's been condemned, though. Uh, we just had it mowed. Okay. So. We'll have a contractor go by and take care of it. What? Yeah. Do we have a procedure uh, in place for after we condemn? We typically try to mow it twice a year. Um, the um, <clears throat> that the lot runs anywhere from. Uh, it's a half, it, there's a lot and a house behind it on the Phillips Street, I believe, it's for the for, yeah, uh, are both conjoined the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, we mow and cut the bushes around the house, and it runs 150 to 175 miles on that lot. Uh, okay, are you, you saying it has process. already been done this year? Or has it been done? No, it has not been done this okay. year. It's too wet early in the year to do it. And, since we made it this far, I was hoping to mow it one more time and then be done with it. And this is typically you know, about the time that we make our second mow. That way it looks good all the time. But the rule of thumb is to cut it, like cut those condemned lots twice a year. Yes, ma'am. And so that usually, when we do the lots that we have condemned, it usually runs brown. $2,000 year is more than twice a year. <clears throat> but you also have to keep in mind these are tax paying individuals. Yes, ma'am. And we do file the lien on, on the property when we do that. Uh, some of them are recouped, some of them are not. Some of these lots are certified in the state. Uh, you get such an exorbitant lien on the property, it will stay in limbo for. I mean, people are just less likely to buy, of course. <clears throat> there are, uh, I can tradition uh, the mayor to blame for some of the liens if they if they try to buy it or whatever. Um, whether it be done or not, I don't know. Uh, that's just... <clears throat> it depends on a lot of it. Thank you so much for the list. Okay, if there's nothing else, let's move on to the building report. Anybody have any questions? That's six building permits issued. <coughs> Three of them are dwelling uh, remodels, and uh, two of them are commercial building remodels, and one of them is a mobile home. That was uh, moved in on uh, Elm Street, double wide. We spoke on last week. Okay. If there's nothing else, <coughs> then we will move on to the street uh, department report. Mr. Davis. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> we tried to keep up with all the requests, complaint forms. Uh, 2020, we think it's the year of the pandemic. I think it's the year of the hurricanes. So we'll go from there. Uh, that's about all I've got. Well, Richard, could we get an estimate on filling the corner of uh, Mona Lisa and Melrose? That pothole with that asphalt just steady pushing up out of it. I got so many complaints about that that it ain't even funny. 
Yeah, yeah. we can do it tomorrow. Yeah, because you pack it and then the garbage truck pushes right yeah. there. Yeah. Well, as much as uh, the coal mix is not made to stand up. No, it's not. Rain as we've got. No, it's not. Every time it's wet and that trash truck runs over, it pushes it out, whichever way you go. going. So we'll try to get it tomorrow. Bro. Appreciate it. I haven't had no complaint on it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm transferring. Okay. Have yeah, you had it? Oh, yes. Um, yeah. We well, don't try to. I haven't talked to him about it. Well, yeah. about it though. Okay. <coughs> We tried to get all the bush hogging done around town. One last time, we're getting close. We haven't quite got through with it. We're just about to get it all done. And maybe we can go back and do some of this other stuff that needs to be done. So that's about all I've got. Okay, with uh, Alderman uh, Mosley not here, I'll call on uh, Alderman Burks. Would you I have nothing. present the streets for paving? No, ma'am. They're in our packet. I don't have the package. Oh. You, you have them in this package. Uh, the streets that supposedly submitted been Kelly Street uh, from Rock to Gray, Fourth Lord, South End, Hobbs Street, Last Half, Railroad Avenue, Shield Street, and Bradley Court. Those are the streets that she submitted. I had nothing to do with that. Okay, we'll be putting that out for bed. And I would just like to share with the council that if you feel that we need to put more into getting more streets, uh, you have that right. And if you would submit it, then uh, that information can be discussed at the next meeting uh, dealing with the budget. Well, it's kind of discouraging to see some of these, but there are so many that's been lacking for the last 25, 30 years that are trails that are being still overlooked. So. Mary, do you know how much has been put in the budget for streets? Was it about One, the It's 125000 That's just kind of been a carryover. Yeah, it yeah. has. But there have been times that uh, the council has gone back and added additional as being necessary. So there are streets that the committee feels that uh, need to be added to this list, then uh, if you would share that information, then uh, that line item can be adjusted as necessary. Well, Mr. Zach, what streets do you know? Want me to start give me a list of them? I sure do. Uh, I mean, that's the only way we're going to get them if they're on the list, huh? Is that, am I not? Most of them on the list already. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now the only list that, that I have seen has been the list of those that are going to be proposed. So, uh, Rick, are you, do you have like another listing? You do not have another listing? No, ma'am. Okay. Oh. Wasn't there years ago, you know, there was a list and then you kind of, you know, went through what was done, what was carried over to the next year? Yes. If we ran out of money for, you know, the ones on, let's say, list A. Then well, those properties were moved over to well, the streets and moved over to the next list. That's positive. Uh, just uh, when Ricky and Mr. Topri and Marty Reap and myself was doing it, it went real well. And so since uh, the former mayor decided that we were putting money in some, some areas that uh, should have been, but other folks complained it was too much in certain wards, then uh, things went all right. Well, but that's a list. Yeah, but technically, there should be streets redone in all of the wards. Uh, not just uh, particular wards, but all well, of them. What we were looking at, Ms. Henderson, was what was the most greatest need. And if there are certain streets that hadn't been looked at in the last 15, 20 years, you pick those up. You know, I know there's certain wards that 
may have been in a better shape. That's not what we say. But most of your problem was in certain certain ways. But again, if there's some carryovers, but he's saying that there's not any carryovers, you can add to the hundred and twenty or whatever thousands that we have in there and in the proposed budget, put whatever you want to put in there and do as many streets as you want to do. We had uh, we had one carryover street that was the east end of Hob, that's the only one that was carried over from last year. Okay, but I thought I saw Hobbs on that list that I just it said. is we, it's we carried over this year. Mm -hmm. But see, this is like St. James uh, down at uh, where Mr. Rochelle lived back in there. He has a nice house back in there going around. And that's a trail. Mm -hmm. If you go go on uh, Pinnister and all through that area, it's a trail. Uh, there's so many like that, and it's been that way. But yet still, these are people that's paying taxes as well. You know, I'm not trying to, to you know, well, Things have been overlooked. The committee, I mean, do you all have a listing that you're That's pulling together nice. that you're going to uh, submit? Because we're. I don't have, I'm not going to be on there. I'm not going to deal with that. Yeah. Okay, so it looks like uh, Alderman Mosley, Burks, and Tofrey. So, do you have any uh, that you want to submit? Well, the thing about it is, like he's trying to explain, when we used to ride around, we put even the ones that we weren't going to get to, we write down a wish list on the ones and try to make it on down through there until we get through there. And then it's, he's been frustrated because it's like Watson Street. You know, if nothing else, we should make that a, a one way if we ain't going to do nothing because it's very dangerous. We got bus drivers coming down through there. And that's where the majority of the kids congregate to be picked up by bus stops. And you can go back through and do that. But then a lot of times, even if you turn to a list, everything that you put on there gets deleted. And you don't get all the ones. But uh, I take it upon myself to uh, ride and, and do that because I'm not riding with anyone right at this point in time through the pandemic. And uh, I'll bring it back. Okay. okay, but let me ask this question. How did we develop the list that we have there? You're saying that you did not participate <clears throat> and that's her list. So are you saying that a committee of one? No, we went around. You did go around. And there was a list and, and I got with her and I did not what number, the number on the list. You write them? Yeah, okay. I write them. Okay, okay, but what I'm hearing is that we have additional streets that are priority as well. Oh my goodness, yeah. Okay, yeah. so the committee, the street committee, you all are going to get together? Uh, Mr. Topher, I don't want to be interested in it really, the way it's going. Okay, but Alvin Topher, you said that you were going to compile? Yes, I will. Okay, and can you have this? Uh, as you know, state law, the administration uh, is charged with having a budget presented to the council by December 1. So our committee would need to have that data prior to uh, that time. We, our next meeting is scheduled for October the 20th. Uh, this is the uh, Ways and Means at 5 o'clock here in the uh, Municipal Court. Uh, we will have another meeting after that meeting, so if you don't have your data together for that meeting, uh, we will announce when the next meeting is, but we would like to have uh, that information as well. I will say on behalf of Alderman Mosley, since she is not here, she's called several street committee meetings. They did do a ride around. If I remember, there were about 19 streets on the original list. Sure, and, then, and then they ranked them. And then this is, is this this is what she came up with to present tonight. What she said that's what she came up with. Do we have the nineteen? We've uh, got the yeah, we've got the others. Okay. So that they were all helpful. That would be a starting point. They were right, yeah. But the committee ranked these as being the, the ones that needed the, the most is the way I understand it from her. And uh, if Mr. Tofrey did, I didn't do it. I was in school at the time of the meeting. Sketch. Okay, uh, 
Mayor, I would like to see a copy of the 19 that you said that was on the list. I think that might help uh, me to see where we are as it relates to uh, streets. And there's one from each ward on this current list. She made sure. I, and I saw that, and in fact, I, I, I noted that uh, that there was one. But again, if there was 19, then I think, I mean, I would like to see the, the streets as to who the others were. Personally, I would. Yeah, I would too. And there was a public hearing held. I remember that. I would not expect anyone to come out for a public hearing in this uh, environment. Um, if the committee is charged with exploring and checking out their areas in all of the respective wards, there's a representative uh, from uh, each one of the wards then uh, I think that we should do what is best for our taxpayers. Okay. You, you will get the list. But it can't, it's not an unlimited fund though, right? I mean, we can't just say we're gonna fix every street. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's what it's, I mean, that, I'm just it making well, sense. The street department's money is restricted, so they right. have X number of dollars that they get from the yeah, that right. fix every street. No, but that's what I'm saying. We can't just I mean we can't fix every street that that everybody wants fixed. So there has to be some kind of system. No, system and the best and the best uh Ms. Memory is that we try to get the most needed ones. Right. And I that's I mean I don't I mean I that's what we were trying yeah, to do for sure. to get the most needed ones. And my understanding yeah. is that these were ranked as being the ones that needed it the most after the ride around. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, that, that's her opinion. It was who was with the ride around besides myself and her. <clears throat> Mr. Ricky, did you do, did you do a ride around? <clears throat> so that was it. That's all I'm saying. I wasn't looking at, you know, what the, what's in this ward. I was looking at the greatest need of the streets. That's all. I think she was trying to be fair about picking one from each ward, but I understand what you're saying, Mr. Zach, that it's just to be greatest need. It doesn't matter where it is. I, I mean, I, under, I see Miss Emily's point, and I see what you're saying. But so she, she called several committee meetings. Right. And we had to move forward with it. We had to have a list. And again, you can put more than, you can add more money. I mean, when you look at our financial statement, mm -hmm. that was the rationale of it has been customary that we uh, borrow funds at low interest for our garbage trucks, for our fire trucks, so that you can do other things for your town, mm -hmm. for your citizens that are taxpayers. I understand. I mean, you're right. So you don't have to stay with the 120000 if you want to put another 100000 in there. We have done that before. We've added money when we had it. But we're in the middle of a pandemic, uh, uncharted waters, you know. So we definitely don't want to lay off employees. We definitely don't want to cut city services. That's the reason back in March when the treasurer and administration recommended uh, our cuts, I just couldn't see it with the budget being stable um, and then uh, things have been well for us although we had a two percent cut this time for i think the first time since the um, pandemic but our revenue looks really good really good so we can do things for our citizens okay so um you don't want us to proceed with this list as far as putting out bids for street paving? Is that what I'm hearing? Isn't that what the committee came up with now? Don't we have a committee for that reason? Am I? Yeah, I mean, yes, you're, you're on the right track. I mean, I'm just saying. Oh. The thing about it is, is Ricky Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're going to get into the weather when it's not. We're going to have, we'll have to wait till warmer weather 
to, uh, uh, to we, actually pay. We can do it. They'll do it too, probably to keep things too simple if weather holds. If it's not raining or cold, you know, it got to be a certain temperature, I think 45 degrees. If you would like, come up to. we could proceed with getting these bid out. And time is going to be essential this year because the paving people, the one that's working is working every day, six, seven days a week. Any of them, any of them has got a paving machine is working. So I'd say it's middle October. Well, we have two committee members here, so. I told you I'm not going to be with that. that trophy to deal with it. I make a motion to go ahead and proceed with the bid of the streets that you didn't present. Okay, motion and I'll second it. Okay, all those in favor, show of hands, unanimous. We'll proceed with this, with bidding these out. <coughs> okay, thank you, Mr. Davis. And again, the council can come back and you can amend, you can add, whenever you're the governing body. You are the governing body. All right, uh, we'll move to uh, community and economic development. Um, Ashley Morgan, yeah, yeah, well, I'll see her. <laughs> so she just turned in her. Yeah, you have her report in your uh, in your packet. Oh, we don't. Okay, fine. If it's okay, I'm going to take a little bit different approach this evening. Um, you have my report. It's very similar to what has been in the past. Each step kind of progressing. Um, but I'd like to take this opportunity to, um, since we're all together, to allow y'all to ask me questions um, and let me clarify a few things because um, I agree with Mr. Tolfrey, perception is everything and everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but sometimes the things are not always factual. Um, so I'd like to clear up a few things if, if that's okay and I'd like to have an open discussion and try to be able to work together so that we can move forward for the people of Warren, for the people of Bradley County, because that's what I'm here to do is to try to help and, and to try to move forward. And I don't want there to be any misconceptions about that. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? No questions? Well, what I would like to say what was, um, we have, uh, the BCEBC has acquired uh, approximately. I'm going to pick it back up. What was, do you know then what Mr. Tofer was talking about? In reference to what he was talking about, do you know? Which, which item specifically, sir? When he was talking about the racial uh, comments that was made. No, sir, I do not have an idea about any racial comments that was made. I would like to address a comment that I made in a BCEBC meeting, one of my first BCEBC meetings that Mayor Pennington was not there. And my comment was, quote, the city council meetings don't always go as quickly and as smoothly as these meetings go. Okay. That was the comment that I made, and I apologize for that. But as far as so anything- So we gave you the opinion that we were not too qualified? No, sir, that is absolutely incorrect. I said quickly and smoothly. Okay. Those are the words. I, I have never served on the city council. I would not know what it takes to be qualified. And I apologize if that perception was done, but my quote was quickly and smoothly. So I don't know where that misinformation came from. And I apologize that y'all have had to sit on that all this time without airing that out. That's, you know, that's not healthy for anybody's state. Any other questions about what, what do we plan to do with the uh, Monroe Bay cabins? As far as getting the rest of the ones that was prescribed that we paid for the survey to get, because I've since the pandemic I've had a lot of complaints about people not being able to get into them because they've always been overloaded, and the state required us to jump through so many hoops in the Washita Valley River Commission paid for a survey out of Virginia to state how many on a survey did we need the cabins and the survey came back we needed twice as many that we actually got okay 
This is honestly the first I've heard of anything about Morro Bay cabins. Okay. If you, I would absolutely be happy to check into that, and I can get you an answer tomorrow. I appreciate it. No problem. And while we are condemning all these other people, probably what we're going to do about the Westboro, the West, the property on Main Street that the chamber on. The Bryant building. The city owns it now. It, it, it's in the city's hands. And we condemn another folks. So as hopefully as you go, um, the BCBC has recently acquired approximately four acres of land uh, as a donation here in the middle of town. And we do have plans to use it, hopefully for real estate development. Going back to the comment that uh, Mr. Sulfie made earlier, that land was never intended to be given away to anyone. We were not advertising it yet because at that particular meeting, we did not have possession of it yet. So we couldn't tell people that it wasn't ours. And you know how things fall through at the last minute. We do now have possession of that land. It will be advertised and it will not be given away to anybody based on political, family ties, racial, anything like that. The reason, and I'd just like to explain to you my reasoning, that I reached out to a regional developer, housing developer, that they came here, they met with me, they met with the mayor, is because I made the assumption that the people that knew how serious the housing problem in Warren and Bradford County was, that if they had the means or the knowledge to do something about that, they would be working on things like that. I didn't see that. So I reached out to somebody regional who was interested in developing our area here, who has that knowledge, who has those means, and who is still interested. But we're not giving that land to him. So there's three parties that I know that are interested in this land, and two of them happen to be from here. I feel like that's part of the beautiful thing about me not living in Warren. I mean, y'all have uh, known that from the very beginning, is I'm not aware of all of the uh, political ties, social ties, family ties, backstories, things like that. I come into this with a clean slate, treating everyone equally. Um, and I, I hate that Mr. Kathy feels like he was slighted, but the, no opportunity had been given yet because the BCDC did not have possession of the land, but we do now. And we're working on that process. What's that exact? Address again, location? Uh, it is here off of Pine Street. I believe it's 310, 310 Pine Street. Um, it is, let's see, that would be to the west side of that the um, Jehovah's Witness Church, and then it goes back a good piece. I will have the exact, set, like that, that just happened, I will have the exact survey and the legal description, and I'll be happy to share with, with, with whoever now that it is ours. Anything else? Okay, thank you, Ashley. Community Economic Development will have a meeting scheduled for <clears throat> Tuesday, October the 27th, here at 5 p.m. If I may, I would just like to add one more thing that, again, you all are always welcome to contact me and talk to me about things, get stuff straight from the horse's mouth. I have no problem admitting if I'm unaware of things, I will find out about those cabins and I'll get you the best answer possible. But I want to work with y'all. I, I really enjoy this job. I enjoy the people here in Warren. I enjoy both of my boards, but I feel like anything that I can do to work with y'all is what I need to do. Are the cabins through the city? Is that, are they through the city? Yes. No, it's through the parks and rivers. But the Chamber of Commerce spearheaded it okay. through the South and South and South uh, Tourism Association, okay. and through the state, and then the South and South and South Development District. So that's going to be something that was before me that I just have not been right. read into. I wasn't aware of it either. Okay. Y'all have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ways and Means Committee. Uh, on the Henderson. Did you finish your, did you have a review? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Uh, thank you. Under the Ways and Means and within your packet, you do have uh, the listing of the 2020 uh, 
Christmas bonus and holiday pay that was in our budget for this year. And again, uh, it was mentioned at the uh, agenda meeting, if you feel that this should uh, be more to appreciate the employees and that can be put in uh, the proposed budget that is going to be for 2021. Uh, in your packet, you will note that we have uh, elected officials and city council 18. Uh, this uh, proposed budget included and that we passed uh, $110. That includes the uh, FICO for um, that particular uh, category, the elected officials and city council, $1,980. Employees with one year but less than five years, we have 22 at $200 each, $4,400. Five years but less than 10 years, we have eight at $300, $2,400. 10 years but less than 15, we have four at $400, $1,000. $600. 15 years but less than 20 years, we have four at $500, $2,000. 20 years and over four at $600, $2,400, giving a total of $14,780. FICA, $1,130.67. Retirement. $2,264.30. I move that we approve the Christmas bonus for elected officials and city employees in the amount of $18,174.97. And attached, you will see the names of those individuals. That is my motion. You have a second? Second. Motion and second uh, to approve the Christmas bonus and also the holiday pay. You want to do that in a separate? Yes, please. Okay. All right. Any other uh, discussion on that? If not, all those in favor of the uh, Christmas bonus approval? Unanimous. Okay. And if you will go with me for the last page. <coughs> Of your document, you will see holiday pay 2020 uh, payable uh, November the 20th. And if you remember, this was a uh, discussion that we have had. And I move that we approve the holiday pay payable November 20th in the amount of $32,022.77 of said names listed in the document. Second. Motion and second to approve the holiday pay. Any discussion? Uh, all those show in favor by show of hands. <clears throat> okay, that's unanimous. Okay. And if we can, as uh, stated earlier, receive a copy of the employee's uh, salary uh, increases, debt increases, uh, from the handbook, that would be uh, very uh, helpful. And again, the Ways and Means Committee will meet on the 20th of this month at 5 p.m. here uh, in the courtroom. That means for the court. Okay, Planning Commission had no meeting, aviation no meeting. You've got the Water and Sewer Commission's uh, minutes and balance sheets. Uh, Mr. Wagner is not here tonight. There is an event out at the complex. So has he already gotten a laptop? Because yes, ma'am. His print is looking so much better. I can mean, actually <laughs> read it. So yes, we bought him one prior to getting him one of the first ones. Well, no, we can we can still submit it. Okay, oh, good. it will still be submitted. Okay, you have a hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there a reason why the Land hasn't been mowed east of the swimming pool. Probably wet. That's. I think we had this discussion last year, and um, it, it it was it the bush hog getting the bush hog back there went, without getting it. Uh, well, all the water in that field runs right there. And also, if you will remind him that that uh, post 
in the uh, Bada area is still down, and if we get a snow, it's going to probably pull the hole. He knows where he is. It's down close to where Mrs. Uh, Clark's home is on um, Church and Rock Street. It's been down for quite some time, and he noted that at, at the last council meeting. That Ms. Street, that you're talking about Mr. Davis? No, I'm talking about uh, no, Mr. Wagner's it. Oh, okay. It's on the baseball field. Okay. We well we had something down at the tennis courts, but I'll I'll talk with him. He knows he mentioned it at the okay. church in Church in Rock. Rock. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, housing authority, you've got to, they had no meeting. Cultural center. Um, we are uh, moving ahead with the fixing of the foundation. Um, they're bringing the back. The bid was to bring the bathrooms, or the suggestion was to bring the bathrooms to ADA standards, and they're going to look at adding one bathroom, a family bathroom, I guess, where the janitorial sink is. Instead of, I think that one I read it, it said add one instead of getting rid of two stalls in each bathroom. So anyway, they're moving forward with fixing the foundation and getting that. Started. We, the city gave a fifty thousand and the school fifty thousand starting off for the foundation to get fixed. Okay. Is there any unfinished business? I'm sorry. Yes, I have some unfinished business because I forgot to bring it up. We had some uh, complaints and also a person to get injured uh, by uh, some stray dogs on Baker Street. She's hurt pretty bad. Is the chief still out there? To yes. Address that. Hey, Sean. Who, who is our dog catcher? Robert Patton. Patton. They're talking about uh, uh, Alderman uh, Tolfrey. Would you state your make your statement again, sir? Yeah, we had a, a patron in, injured on Baker Street, okay. running from a. Uh, I think she said it was three straight dogs. Right. Mm -hmm. Where that Well, unfortunately, you know. We're gonna have straight off and I'm trying to round them up as well as what we can. Keep in mind though, uh, well, we do have a small pair, so a lot of times we will get filled and have no place else to hold them. And we can't just go out and utilize them ourselves and, and shoot them on site, so we will have dog parks from time to time and we do address them on um, the first option, the first chance that we get them. So we'll make sure we have, and especially vicious dogs, we have the kind of dog attack somebody, we get them that per se, but a lot of times you know, what happens is the dog, like I said, we, so the ones we can round up, we can round up and we can hold them from we can hold them. We try to ride by the law and the you know, animal people and try to... And it was a tough area in the way because they evade when they go on to the dash craft property up under that fence through them uh, drainage waves over there. Well, as I said, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, you know, that's all I can say. Yeah. Like, we, do, we do address it when it does happen, especially, especially the, um, the, the vicious dogs. I've had times we have to let non vicious dogs go to in order to make room for vicious dogs to protect the public. Hey, while you're here, I told the mayor about it earlier. People parking the wrong way on Cedar Street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one that we're going to put the signs up at? Yes. Okay, we'll, yeah. we'll get back They're parking here. the wrong way at night. You can't see them until you. Okay. You get right up on you. Any know, particular area, the right area is still here? It's still in the, the, the right. van. Right, okay. Right there. Okay, I'll make sure I, I got to fit on that for you. All right, no problem. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, there's no one signed up to speak, speak publicly and no one here. So is, is there any new business? Uh, the only announcement I have is the uh, extension service puts out a really good book. There's some out there on the table. It's nonpartisan. It just makes the uh, it, it statements about the ballots your ballots and what's on there so if you want to pick one up and take it with you feel free to take extra if you want to put them at your business that's fine too i need a motion to pay the bills for september i know that we pay the bills for the month of september second motion and second to pay the bills any discussion I'm hearing none uh, all those in favor show of hands unanimous 
set the meeting for November. Agenda meeting will be the 5th at 7th. And then the second Monday is the 9th at 5.30. All those in favor?